let's talk a little bit about Barry Leonard. Now, um, let's, let's like kind of set the table here. You know, I live in the city of Poway, the city in the country. And Barry Leonard is one of our city councilmen. And at the meeting, the city council meeting that was held, I believe it was on Tuesday night, he announced his resignation. It was unexpected. You know, he's going to sit in up through one um, additional meeting. But it really caught a lot of people off guard because a lot of people thought that Barry Leonard potentially could be the next mayor of Poway, particularly if Steve Voss, our current mayor, were ever to move on to higher office. That had often been rumored or discussed. And so now Barry Leonard has resigned. I think it caught a lot of us by surprise. I think there's a lot more to the story that we're going to hear about. But let me just share some thoughts that were in our local newspaper, the Poway Chieftain. And uh, Barry said at the council meeting two days ago, he says, I'd just like to say, that recent changes in my life have reminded me that nothing is permanent. Because of some recent changes in my life, I'm going to submit my resignation to the council. Um, and he said that his uh, meeting on May 16th will be his last. And he says on May 16th, he'll have more to share. Uh, but he wanted to thank everyone for all the work they've done in the city and the friendships and relationships that he's built. Uh, Mayor Voss went on to praise uh, Councilman Barry Leonard, saying that Barry served Poway with heart, honesty, and wisdom. I've never known a finer human being or a more dedicated public servant. He will be sorely missed. Now, that's Barry Leonard, sorely missed. And uh, Ed Franklin on the live stream already jumping in says, hey, man, Barry's a good man. I just spoke to him today. You know, Barry is a good guy. And um, I actually, I was with Lee Hacksaw Hamilton and I were having uh, over at the Einstein Brothers Bakels on RB. We were having, uh, you know, just a cup of coffee and a bagel one day. And uh, and here comes Barry Leonard was there and ran into him. So it was pretty cool. So I saw him about, yeah, maybe about a month ago. Um, so th there's a couple of angles to the story that I think are worth, a discuss worth discussing. And first of all, it's a big news when you have a city council person resigning. And then now the question is going to be, well, first of all, a lot of people are wondering, why is he resigning? What are, what are these things that have changed in his life? Now, I'm sure we're going to hear from Barry soon. But one of the things that, that I know, at least, is I know that his wife has health issues. And I don't know the detail of it or how extensive it is, but I'm, I'm speculating that maybe there has been some concern, you know, with the health of his family, that he needed to be more available to support his family members. And if so, you know, Barry, you got to take care of your family. I appreciate and I understand that. But I don't know. I mean, I'm just speculating. So we may learn more. We may find out more information about the reasons for his resignation. Now, the other angle to this is how would he be replaced? And this gets into a topic that has been discussed at length in a lot of our Poway elections going back probably 10 years. And there's been a pattern where there have been council members that have resigned midway through their, their term, or in other cases have been promoted, like when Mayor Voss was made mayor in 2014. And all of these cases, it's le left a vacancy on the city council. And the question then becomes, what do you do? If it's in the middle of a, you know, if, if people resign at the end of their term is normal, and then there's, a, there's an election, just like there always is an election every two years. But if they resigned in the middle of their term, should they be replaced with an appointment? You know, where the city council themselves essentially pick a person to join them? And we did that. In fact, that's how Barry Leonard came on board with Poway City Council. When Mayor Steve Voss was elected mayor, his seat was vacant. And so the city council, you know, basically said job opening and they they uh, took applications. They interviewed candidates. They started with over 20 candidates, I remember, and they whittled it down. And I remember it was Barry Leonard and... Um, I think it was Karen Dunn were the two finalists and Barry was the one that was chosen. And so it, it did invite a lot of, you know, sort of conspiracy theory, you know, was Barry really sort of pre-selected? 
was the appointment process a legit process where people were truly evaluated or was it a dog and pony show? Was it just a facade? Because the city council kind of already had their guy picked in advance. That's what some people believe here in the city of Poway. And that's why a lot of people are, are upset when there ever there is an appointment because they believe that the democratic process is being distorted. Now, in the case of the Barry Leonard appointment, I mean, Barry, I believe, was a very qualified person, lives here in Poway, very involved with civic affairs. Obviously, he had friends in high places. Um, I didn't necessarily object to uh, Barry being appointed to the council, but I did. I would prefer a democratic process because, after all, isn't what local government supposed to be about is representative democracy, and it's best to have them elected by the people. Now, if they were to go to an election, this is usually one of the objections. If they go to an election, it's going to cost the taxpayers money. It's going to cost, and you hear all the numbers a half a million dollars, $800,000, $2 million, whatever it is, to have a special election. Does that make sense? Well, in my opinion, it does, <laughs> because the cost of the election may sound like a lot, you know, whether it's a half a million or $2 million or whatever the number ends up being. That's still a tiny fraction of the overall city budget. And if the city needs to have an election, you know, kind of it's an emergency, it needs to happen. To me, that should be one of the top priorities of a city government is to have representation. So it makes sense to me that they should have an election. And then by having an election, you also can eliminate the conspiracy theory, whether true or not, that the appointment process is kind of a... Um, you know, like I said, like a dog and pony show. It may very well be a legitimate process. It may not, but it at least removes that speculation that that's the case. So that's that's the question now. What are they going to do? Uh, because Barry, I'm trying to remember here, he was, um, I think, was his term, I think, uh, was in 20... 20, right? Or is he, is he up for a re-election in 2024 or 2026? I'm getting my dates confused here. I think it's 2026. Um, so if that's the case, there's three plus years in front of him. And if it's not, if I got it wrong, that it's one plus years. So, you know, if, if, if there were only like a few months left in someone's term, you maybe could argue there should be an appointment or you maybe could argue, like, hey, we'll just go without for a little bit. Uh, Yuri Bolin on the live stream already share in the comments here. 2024 is when Barry Leonard's term expires. So that would be November of 2024. So that's roughly a year and a half where District 2 in Poway would not be getting full representation. And District 2, for the most part, is Green Valley, you know, the area where the farm development is, and Bridalwood and, you know, the Grove, which is sort of east of Poway High. And then that just sort of in generally speaking, the whole kind of Espola Road area of North Poway is, is Barry's territory, District 2. They would go without representation. And you don't really want that, especially for a year and a half. So the question now is going to become, what are they going to do? Um, there's already speculation. In fact, there has been speculation for a very long time that John Couvret would be a candidate for city council at some point. And, you know, John Couvret is the second half of the dynamic duo, John Couvret and Ginger Couvret. And Ginger Couvret already sits on the Poway Unified School Board. Um, and she had been one of the people that had previously applied or had expressed interest on being on Poway City Council. And I take that back. I don't think she was an applicant for the appointment, but she has you know, it's sort of well known that she has interest in being on the Poway City Council because all of her activities have been here in Poway. But her her um, husband, John, is the current or the former CEO of the Poway Chamber. Um, or excuse me, I'm saying this wrong. I think he's chairman of the board of the Poway Chamber at one point. He's the president of the Kiwanis Club. He's another kind of civic community dynamo. 
And it'd be interesting if the Couvrettes had a tag team, one elected on the city council or appointed on city council, and then one on the school board. That's a scenario that's realistic. That's a scenario that could happen. I'm sure, though, that if they opened it up to an appointment process, there would be a number of other candidates that would jump in. And then if there was an election, certainly there would be a number of candidates that would jump in. So there's more to learn on this. Um, Barry, you know, again, I like Barry. I mean, Barry is a very strong, opinionated guy. Um, so and he does rub some people the wrong way. I know there's people in Poway that don't like him. I generally like Barry. Um, and I, I appreciate him and I understand him. Now, does he govern the way I would govern? No. I mean, we're different people. Um, but I have no problems with Barry Leonard. Other people do. Um, so that's what makes this so interesting on what they're going to do to replace him. So um, be interested in your thoughts and comments on the live stream. So if you got some um, ideas, just let me know. We'll get you involved. Now, before I move on.